This is Speaking of Events, the podcast for event industry leaders. We bring together innovators, strategic rock stars, and visionary creatives to talk all about events, industry trends, and anything in between. And speaking of events, here is your host, Carrie Garbus. Here are some fun facts about me. I have been to every state except for Hawaii. I have been a contestant on two game shows. I was arrested once, sort of, and it's kind of a long story. Next time, another time. I have never, ever, ever been to a football game, ever. Not one, not a high school game, not a college game. And I went to Syracuse, not like a powder puff or whatever that thing was, nothing. I've never, ever been to a football game for no specific reason. I have been to professional baseball, uh, hockey, basketball, soccer. I have been to Gillette Stadium. I was even on the field of Gillette Stadium. In fact, my holiday card this past year was me sitting in the stands of Gillette Stadium with my husband and my daughter, sort of like a play on Ted Lasso. So I've been near football adjacent. I have many football fans in my life, yet I have never ever been to a football game ever. And that is why we are so incredibly lucky that today's guest is even speaking to me because she's probably been to more than one football game. I'm going to guess, we're going to talk about it, but I'm going to guess that she has been to more than one football game and her football knowledge is going to far exceed mine. So if she is still willing to talk to me, I am honored to have as today's guest on Speaking of Events is none other than Jacqueline Carroll, events manager with the Kansas City Chiefs. And for those who don't know, that's a football team. Welcome, Jacqueline. Thank you so much for having me, Carrie. Are you still going to hang out and talk to me? I'll still hang out and talk to you. You can come out here for a game. We just host a few every year. So I'm going to, okay. I, they, it is now recorded, stamped, primed. That's in gold. That's, that's the show quote. We'd love you to have are. you out here. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Wait, this just in having nothing to do really with events, but I also know you're a crime junkie fan right so did you listen to serial we're going to talk about another podcast on the podcast did you ever listen to the the podcast yes. serial yes, yes you did so you know what happened yesterday right well, i didn't know this big news? I, haven't, I didn't watch yesterday's i didn't listen to yesterday's episode yet i only do when i'm in the car on trips so not the episode yesterday but like the globe the global oh, it's not no. so global what the did u.s news okay so I was very excited because today, and we're recording on September 20th, is that Adnan Saeed, who was on the yes. first, he got released. He, the judge in Baltimore, my hometown, still never been to Ravens football game or when it was the Colts when I was like a baby, uh, still never went to any of those games. The, the judge vacated his murder conviction and gave him 30 days, gave not him, his pro, the prosecutors 30 days to proceed with the trial or drop the case. This is huge in the crime junkie. Yeah. Yes. No, I know. So you put the connect, connect the dots for me together. And yes, no, I did hear that. And we'll see what happens. No, I know, that was a, good stories. Yes. That was a little out of left field, which is a baseball reference so I don't, did you understand that if I yes. say <laughs> no I understand all sports references most of the time I'm coming off of a 80 plus hour work week with a large event this last weekend and a home football game but yes no no we are tracking it and hopefully something exciting we'll see what the next 30 days brings yes we will see and I'm glad you get all sports references because I get about two. So you're going to help me. You're here. You, I hope you're here for me. I'm just glad you're sticking around. No, there is not a sporting event that I wouldn't wouldn't go to or watch. I, I don't say so. You have a really cool history with sports. We are going to get into that first since we got the serial news off the table is I want to ask you, of course, what is the one thing you wished 
more people knew about events and please don't say something about football. <laughs> no, no, no. I think for me, I wish more people knew that behind every great event is a person with an idea and that their idea is only with good intentions, right? Creating a memory, anything like that, but that behind every event there is a person and, you know, good or bad or indifferent, um, that there's a person behind every great event that happens. That is so true. There, sometimes it can feel, or people forget that it's a human, it's a human experience and that there is a person behind every event. Oftentimes, especially with the Kansas City Chiefs football team, you are that person behind the event, correct? Correct, yep. And, and we host a lot of events here at um, GHA Field at Arrowhead Stadium. Um, throughout the year, not just football games, which I think a lot of people um, sometimes forget. Um, so, you know, a lot of times I am the person behind it or one that at least helped putting it on. Um, but nonetheless, there is a person behind the, the events. Will you tell us a little bit about what you do with the with the Kansas City Chiefs, please? Yeah, of course. So um, inside the Kansas City, Kansas City Chiefs, there is a special events arm called Arrowhead Events. We focus on the small, medium, and large market events um, that help make GHA Field at Arrowhead Stadium an entertainment destination for all these events. So whether it's a small meeting of 100 people or whether it's a 5,000 event out in the parking lot or a concert um, like George Strait or anything like that, our department helps oversee and execute um, and produce all of those events here at the stadium. That is very cool. How long have you been with them? One year. One year to date today, actually. One year today? One year today. Woohoo! Congratulations. This is Thank a you. banner day. Wow. I, it is. I actually was like, I wonder what my one year anniversary is. And then I looked and I was like, oh, it, it, it's this week. And it's today. And we're celebrating by bringing yeah. you on speaking of events. Thank you. It, yes. No. So it's exciting. Yeah. It's been, it's been one year, a great year, busy year. Um, obviously, the Chiefs have a lot of momentum um, in the football season, but also just in events here and hosted a number of concerts over the summer, um, not to mention a, a lot of private events. So a good first year and looking forward to year two. Yes. And this has been a, a different year pro than a typical, not that anything's typical these days. What has changed from September 20th, 2020? One, do you notice how I'm like pausing to figure out what year it is? So a year ago, what's different today than it was a year ago when you started? Do you think some big differences? Um, some big differences is we have a much larger team now. Um, so instead of a team of three, we are now a team of five, um, nice. which is really exciting and great to see, especially coming out of post COVID, um, that there is enough um, interest to have a much larger team. Um, and that COVID protocols for the for for us have gone away, um, which we last season were on the little bit of the fence because of the NFL protocols and how that relates to events that we have. Um, but we we have since seen that go away, so it'll be a great a great year without COVID protocols. Absolutely, one one big thing yes. not on not on your plate probably. This is, it's exciting. You're in a different space than a lot of people I talk to, which I always welcome. And you get to do and see some outrageous things. So what's the most outrageous event you've ever been a part of? Um, oh, outrageous event. So my previous job, I was with the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Olympic team. And I had the opportunity to spearhead a group um, going to the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea. I don't think you're ever going to get, well, the only other sporting event that's larger than that is the FIFA World Cup, um, but I don't think you're ever going to see anything more outrageous than that, um, but watching Sean White win his half pipe um, and just knowing the, the, all the details that I put in to get them there, are, all, everyone that was with us and, and watching him was probably the most outrageous single event that I've ever been a part of um, from just a historical perspective. Uh, my current job, we recently did a project that dropped 10,000 balls, super balls in a parking lot. So that was pretty outrageous and different that we've never done before. Is that, is that dangerous? What's the liability on something like that? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of liability. Uh, no, it was all done within safe, safe pro protocols and everything like that. No one was hurt. No one was injured. Um, but you, you know, you just never know how fast or how high those balls are going to bounce back up. So it was really 
something new super for, something new for all of us to see but it was it was really cool and, and definitely outrageous here at the stadium wait how did can you share how we got how you got the balls on yeah. the dropped well well we how we collected them or how did they drop out of the sky how did they drop out of the sky a helicopter oh I, was it you that you were just taking them out one by one like like a santa sack because that would take some time <laughs> no but that would be really entertaining and i i can't give away too many more details because right uh, what it hasn't hasn't come out yet but um no it was a helicopter um dropped them right into a parking lot and then just watched them all go and <laughs> i have a lot of questions we'll move on <laughs> I, I i have a lot of questions about these super balls okay <clears throat> Back to the the Olympics, is that you were leading this team, organizing this team that was going there, and you stayed there. You were there for a significant amount of time, right? Yes, forty seven days, right? Yeah. So, so um, within the Olympic and Paralympics, obviously the Olympics happen first, and Paralympics follow. Um, my role specifically, we brought over um, hospitality is a large part of the Olympics. Um, as many people may or may not know, the United States uh, Olympic movement and Paralympic movement aren't government funded. Um, so a lot of it comes from private donations and, and corporations. So my role specifically was to uh, put on a hospitality program. Um, but that means getting a lot of people to a number of different events in a foreign city that no one speaks, you know, you know very rarely do they speak English. Um, and creating an event inside of an event inside of an event, right? Um, so I was there for 47 days, start to finish. I had been there a number of times before, um, but you know, definitely, I was 13 days shy of having to get a a, a visa to a visa, be a, res yeah. a resident, um, which I never thought I was going to get that close, um, but I, I certainly was. And um, no, it was just it was an outrageous experience, right? You're going all times, all days. Events are happening all over the city, people are going all over the city, they need to eat, they need to do this, like, it's all kind of part of this big master plan, and um, just getting everyone, you know, where they need to go, and when they need to be there. Wow, what, what, if anything, did you miss when you were there from the States? Um, getting my eyebrows waxed, that was something, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, I when feel I, seen. Oh, I when still I, feel seen. Thank you. When I, when I came back to from the United States, my husband and I laugh at this now, but I went through this whole like, oh my gosh, I haven't like done self care in fifty days, and I went and like got my hair highlighted, all this sort of stuff. And he looks at me, he's like, "What did you do?" And I was like, "I just I needed a refresh." And he's like, "Can you take it out? Like, is this highlights washable?" And I was like, "No, no, no, no. dear." No, um, but no, I mean, truthfully, I think I missed, uh, I mean, the food, you're right, your um, food is, is different, um, obviously over in South Korea, um, but really mostly my eyebrows being waxed. <laughs> That's my favorite answer ever. Thank you for that. And what, if anything, do you miss from there? I know it was a while back, you know, it was a number of years ago, anything is there anything you missed from South Korea now? Stateside? I do. I do. Um, I'm like, there is, especially in the world that we live in today, there's no prouder or there's no prouder moment to then to watch all these athletes from all these different countries, you know, put politics for the most part aside and, and things like that, but really be a part of what they are in the, in that moment. So like, I miss that moment. Yeah. I miss that moment of watching all these different athletes compete um, and I miss that moment of like just being able to hear the national anthem played because Sean White won gold or Jesse Diggins and Keegan Randall were the first women ever in United States history to win a medal and nonetheless gold. So um, I, I miss that. Um, you know, it's so it, you just look back at it and it's a, it's a blur, right? And I think that's what happens with a lot of events. Like you get so emotionally invested, you work so hard, and then it all it just goes. Events are meant to end; they're not meant to last forever. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, I miss some of it, but it's always really, really great memories to have and ones that I'll have for a lifetime. That is wonderful. Thank you. I do. I want to switch gears a little bit and get into my world just a little bit and ask about speaker disasters because they happen everywhere, even in the, even in the sports world, they happen, right? Yeah. Do you have so one? I do. So I think, um, as I mentioned, Arrowhead Events does small market events, and a lot of those are, are galas um, or um, meetings and things like that. 
every now and then we get a we get a, a drunken auctioneer that really just ruins the moment for the event um and it's always quite we had one a couple of weeks ago he just the event was over it needed to be over it was running out of time like contractually like the event loadout was supposed to be happening the bar was supposed to be closing i mean you name it and he kept talking and would not stop and you know you go to the event person like the event coordinator or the event contact i should say for us and you're like hey like your time is ending like we really need to wrap this up no one knew how to stop him no one knew how to turn his mic like no one just he just kept going um and so that there was, was no music to turn like way up like they do at the award you, show like <laughs> right you're like just drown him out just drown him out um but it was it's always entertaining and you always wonder like how how, how did that happen how did he sneak that many beers or whatever um but always it's always entertaining <laughs> for us to get some drunk auctioneers that never want to get off the stage yes yes and my next podcast is called drunk uh, uh, auctioneers and I can't wait for it. To <laughs> right. And it may come up with the best stories. And it, certainly it helps from raising money and things like that, which obviously we want our clients to do. Right. Um, but when you're towards the end of the event and you know you need to get out of that building, you know, that sort of thing, it's 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 funny. So the, the auctioneers speak very, very quickly and do that like cool cadence thing that I can't replicate. Does a drunk auctioneer also speak very quickly? Or is it all of a sudden very drawn out and slurred and you're like, what happened? Very quickly. It's, oh, it, still. It actually, like, it feels like in our instant, it like sped up, right? It was like, oh, he did. He had already done the fund and need. He had already done um, the live auction and he just like kept going and was getting faster and louder, right? Like that's just part of that cadence. Oh yeah. Um, but yes, I finally we got him off stage but it is entertaining and he definitely kept the crowd going <laughs> that's good <laughs> and the bar bill got very high right so you take all of this in stride you're willing to give up good eyebrow hygiene and everything for this industry so what else makes a good event professional in your opinion yeah i think um the, the ability to be selfless, right? I think that's all why event planners are, are so good at what they do is that they are there to help and support other people and they take themselves out of it. Um, I think that obviously the obvious of being detail-oriented, um, customer-friendly, um, think on your toes, that sort of thing is, is all part of being a really good event planner. Um, but just being, you know, my what I challenge our team here with and, and really I have always is how do you be proactive versus reactive, right? No, nothing's ever going to go perfect. Being being perfect is is just not a thing. Um, but how can you proactively think about what those steps are or what you need to do in order to um, react to a situation that you may or may not see coming? Um, so I think those are some key things that really help an event planner um, be successful. Yeah, absolutely. So how did you get here? You you grew up in Nebraska. Where, where in Nebraska would you be willing to share where? In yep, Nebraska? Uh, West Omaha. West Omaha, Nebraska. Yep. You go to Iowa State. Yep. And voila, Crowd Cyclone. The, right. You're at, and now you're at the Kansas City Chiefs. How, how did that happen? Yeah. So, um, similar to probably a lot of other people's journey in college, um, I didn't I didn't graduate with the major I went in with. Um, I was the fifth. I was walking out of a, a marketing final and I heard a girl on a cell phone talking to her mom, like, I'm going to change my major to event management. And I was like, ding, ding, ding. Like, that's me. Uh, so I went, my, my advisor at the time, and I still laugh about it now because I went to her and I was like, I need to change my major. And she's like, you know, let's talk about this. You're, you know, how, what this is going to add on to you, all that sort of stuff. I was like, no, this major is mine. And I'm very, once I get my mind made, like that is, that is my path. Um, so I switched my major and then I just started, you know, I'd always loved events. I was, you know, I always loved planning things for family and friends and things like that. So it was just natural. Um, at the time I was the part of the fifth graduating class of event management at Iowa state. So brand new, um, where you're, you're, they have a great, uh, hospitality management program, but they were branching out in the event management world, um, and just got involved in everything from rodeo club to, working at Breck Services to, oh gosh, fashion show to the first ever student ran bacon festival, all the events I could be a part of. Um, but sports was always, was always my passion. Um, and then I 
left Iowa and went to Colorado Springs um, to join the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee, lived and worked out there for three years, and then moved to Utah uh, to work for U.S. Ski and Snowboard, and now I'm here. Now you are here. Can we back up? Because I heard the word bacon. Yes. <laughs> what, what, tell me about that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, I, I cannot take credit for this idea. It was this genius named Jake Swanson. He wanted to put on the first ever student ran bacon festival. Um, and we put our minds to it and got a, Iowa State's an ag school, for those of you that don't know. Um, we put our heads together and um, a bunch of us just got together, did different things. And voila, it came together. It was really successful. Um, it was, you know, if you ever want to handle 1500 plus pounds of cooked bacon, you don't want to eat it anytime after that because you just smell like it. And you, that's all you've really been around. Um, but it was an outdoor, you know, outdoor festival, so to speak. Um, and it was super successful. And they still do it. It's much bigger now. And it's in a new building and things like that. But it, uh, it stuck around and other, it was right when bacon was really becoming a trend, right? Like, I feel like it was just starting to really take off. Um, so yeah, that was what really I'd say was, uh, it was a highlight of college. I look back at it now. Bacon was a highlight of college for me as well. A little bit <laughs> different. Yes. So <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I, I keep it on my resume. I remember when I interviewed for my first internship, it was like one of the one things they asked me off of my resume on it. And I was like, oh, let's talk about bacon. Like, you know what I mean? And that's the cool thing about events is they're never, it's never the same event and they're always interesting. So they always give you something to talk about. Yeah, that's very cool. I'm going to, I'm going to add bacon to my resume for no reason, just <laughs> to give something people to talk about with me. Absolutely. And what about if, were you, were you into sports? Did you play sports growing up? Did you did? did yep. You, so I did came you go to a, football games. Oh yes. I, um, my parents, um, are both very sports enthusiastic. I grew up in a really sports, um, centric family, um, volleyball, swimming, soccer, track and field. I mean, you name it. Um, I have two sisters and a brother, all sports. My brother runs ultra marathons and Boston marathons, things like that. I'm more you know, volleyball, soccer, that sort of stuff. Um, but sports were always a passion and a, and a common thing, right? Good family activity. Um, my parents are actually born and raised Packer fans, which is funny because I work for the Chiefs now. Um, so naturally I grew up going to those my, my whole life. Um, and so it's just something that I love the team aspect of it. Um, I think, you know, you're, you're always better off as a team than you are as an individual. And so I just naturally always grew to it. Didn't play in college, um, but played, you know, play all throughout high school and, and still play, you know, for fun in, in the rec now. That is awesome. Thank you. Well, Jacqueline, are you ready for our lightning and express round? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> you're feeling good? Feeling good. You need a sip of water? You're good? I'm good. Okay. All right. We are going to put 45 seconds on the clock. And you've got seven questions. Here you go. What is your favorite moment in the event process? Um, the smile on the guest face when they see the when they walk into the room and they light up. Yes. Oh, I love that. Who do you consider your mentor? So I've been fortunate to have a number of great mentors throughout my my short professional career thus far. Um, my previous boss, Trisha Worthington, is probably my biggest mentor still to the state, um, biggest champion, so. Wonderful. If you could be on a game show, what game show would you be on? Um, I was on Nickelodeon Slime Live, so I probably would stick with that one. You were, that's I so was. cool. Did you get slimed? I did, I was uh, Universal Studios when I was, oh gosh, 11, 12, something like that. Yeah. Um, my mom tells great stories and has great pictures of it, but I think I'd, I'd go back to that. Universal Studios is where I filmed Family Feud. Okay, moving on. What do you do every day to stay healthy and sane? Um, get I walked, uh, yes. <laughs> I get my eyebrows back. <laughs> right? Um, but, but, truthfully, between the hours of 5.30 and 8 30 are my favorite hours of the day because I get to walk my dogs and you know do all the things that make me feel have a clear head to come to work to do my job well awesome I have two corgis we have two corgis and they're the cutest things ever oh. so. 
If what are their names? That's not that's not the, to in the seven questions. Toby and Clark. Toby and Clark. If you weren't talking to me right now, what would you be doing? Oh, I would be doing an event recap from our festival that we had this weekend. <laughs> was bacon? Did they have any bacon there? You know they didn't. Uh, they didn't. It was a. It was a previous years they had 10 days to build it we gave them two days to build it um so lots of learnings but bacon wasn't involved in this one uh, alabama was the band the band alabama was though oh oh very nice all right you may have to stand for this one because i'm gonna ask you to share your favorite chiefs cheer please oh gosh oh i cannot sing the tech nine song uh this is bad. I'm blanking because I can't remember the lyrics to it right I know, now. I know it's hard. It's high pressure here in the lightning express round that is now like in minute five. We're good. <laughs> but the thing is I can remember, I can remember the Iowa state one off the top of my head. Oh, real five, five, okay. five for Iowa state. Yes, that's good. We're good. Iowa We're good. Five, we'll five, leave five, it with five. Iowa state. Yes. Yes. Iowa state. Woo. If you want the cheese one, you can let, Oh, welcome to the bread kingdom. There you go. <laughs> That's what I got. That's right. awesome. Oh, I think we got bonus. That's amazing. All right. Final question in minute 18 of the Lightning Express round. What is the best way to take care of an event professional? Oh, what is the best way? To learn to to learn to leave it at work. Oh my gosh. That is just, that's good life advice. That's amazing. Absolutely. I, Events will events happen all the time and work never seems to stop, but you got to learn to leave it at work because you're never going to be able to separate yourself. Good, good place to end it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Jack, you're welcome. Jacqueline, where can people find you, connect with you if they want to? Yeah, of course. Um, Jacqueline Carroll uh, on LinkedIn, um, on Facebook, Instagram, all that sort of, or, or all that sorts of fun stuff. stuff. Um, you stuff. can find my email address on the chief's website if you're interested. Um, but yeah, all, all the stuff. Always happy absolutely. to connect and love connecting with um, like-minded professionals. Yes, absolutely. We'll post that. We'll post your contact info in the show notes as well. Thank you. Thank you. I was very nervous about opening and, and disclosing that I'd never actually been to a football game. So I appreciate that you stayed with me and didn't hang up and weren't like, I'm out. So <clears throat> thank like you I said, much. any anytime you want to come out, just let me know. Oh, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you to the Kansas City Chiefs for lending you to us for a little bit today. Congratulations on your one year anniversary. How amazing. And thank you to our audience. Remember that if you like events, if you love events, even if you loathe events, tell someone about this podcast. And Thank you very much again to Jacqueline and whatever you speak about, remember to be speaking of events. Speaking of events is sponsored by Ovation, the gold standard for professional presence and speaker development training, helping everyone get prepared, get confident and get Ovation.